Coming up next, an interview with a hard rock singer on his band's biggest hit. Definitely one of the most gut-wrenching songs of its time. This song came from very tragic circumstances. The singer had come off tour and called up his friend to get his old girlfriend's number. He was looking forward to seeing her after being out on the road. His friend called him the next day, but instead of giving him her number, he conveyed the sad news that she had just passed away. This song came to the singer when he attended the funeral. Coming up next, a powerful story from this singer on a song that's become a true classic. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember making a pitcher of Kool-Aid with just the right mix of sugar and the packet, you know, when you were growing up, you're going to dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now and click the bell so you always know when our new ones are dropping. Man, I taste Kool-Aid today and it takes me right back to the, the early 80s. Also, check us out on Patreon for even more content that helps us to keep it a daily show. So it's time for our latest edition of Revelations. This is where featured artists go deep on their greatest songs and albums, stories you really won't hear anywhere else. Today, we have a special session with singer and guitarist Mark Slaughter from the hard rock band Slaughter on the story of their biggest hit, Fly to the Angels. If you remember, Slaughter came in at the tail end of the glam metal era, releasing their double platinum album, Stick It To You, one of the biggest records of 1990. Of course, the album featured three hits, Up All Night, Spend Some Time, and today's featured song, Fly To The Angels. I think if these guys would have come out three or four years earlier, they would have been one of the biggest bands of the era. Love Stick It To You, such a great record. And you know what? I'm not even going to give anything out on Flight of the Angels. Mark has such a great story. It's really a, a heart-wrenching story of this rocker. Let's get right into the interview. As we get into it, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. You know, when you choose Zenny and you click on our info button right up here, there are always great deals that they're running on frames. I mean, you choose your color, your shape, your size, and you can do it for up to 80% off regular retail prices in the climate we're living in right now. With everything being so expensive, it's a great deal. Do it today. Here's Mark. What is your soundtrack now? This is my uh, kicking ass song, you know? <laughs> Whatever that is, that's your song, man. And when you're going to kick ass, that's the one you play. Oh, you yeah. know, or if you want to be melancholy, this is a song or you want to have, you know, whatever that is, you know, you want to have the blues, you get one that really gives you the blues. And that's, that's, that's your emotion. That's what music does. Well, one that does so incredibly well, it's a spectacular song that has stuck with me decades after first hearing it. And, and it's a part of my regular playlist and it's just, it gets this melancholy, atmospheric uh, fly to the angels. Oh, thanks. Great songs of the time. Number 19 pop, number 15 on the rock charts, written by you and Dana. And there's so many urban legends about this one. I mean, over the years, I've heard so many different stories. You know, I've heard everything from about girlfriend from high school i've heard right yeah some people say no it's just it's just about airplanes man <laughs> you know yeah the airplanes was something of a spin so it doesn't become we're a good time rock and roll band but the song had some some emotion to it so we wanted to give some type of a spin so it doesn't become so dark that it's not what we are Tell us the story of how it happened, because I, I think it's an incredible story. I called a friend of mine, uh, I, Don, a friend of mine that we grew up together, and I said, hey, man, I, I don't have Cindy's number. It was a girl from high school that we dated, and you know, and and uh, and I said, I'd like, to, I'd like to see her. I want to talk to her. And he said, okay, well, I'll find her number. And then two days come go by, and then he calls me, and he says, Mark, I have some really bad news. And I go, what's that? And he goes, uh, he goes, well, I found Cin Cindy, but he goes, her funeral's tomorrow. Oh my gosh. And I was like, what? 
and and I think I think that that more than anything, it's that you know you get in your mind this is the way things are going to go or how this is going to happen. And I went to this funeral and I and you know and I walk into this this mortuary and the whole place is filled with roses. And that's where the line hit me. I said, fly the angels, flowers bloom in your name. Right then. That's when it hit me. And I was like, wow, this is so crazy. And so, you know, I, I, I come up with the idea. I said to Dana, I go, I got the idea, fly the angels, heaven awaits your heart, and flowers bloom in your name, but I don't have anything else in the song. And I played the chords and he's like, that's great. And he said, what if we did kind of a zeppelin -y thing in, in the middle of it? And so that descending Zeppelin, dum, dum, that, that. That was Dana's like, just kind of add that whole rolling down the road type thing. And, and, you know, and again, that's the two writers writing together where the song needs to go and, and what, that is and how to let go of somebody when they pass and you know i i honestly feel that that's a key point that's the dance that you do in in music and when it's natural it came i was writing the lyrics down on the pizza box we had the the song structure and i had the the bouncing ball melody and i just had to add words to those notes and I You know, there's no form-fitted way of making a song. It's art. You know, getting into the songwriting side of it, it, it's just, it wrote itself. And I think that's it. You can't overthink it. You do something that's a natural thing of where the song writes. It becomes its own entity. It's not you. It just becomes its own thing. And, you know, we, we all lose somebody in our life and, it, you know, along the way we're losing, you know, our parents and friends and I mean, it just, it just sucks, but it's about letting go. It's the, it's the freeing of that emotion and not, not holding on to it and letting it consume you. I think that, you know, when you're, when you're dead and gone, you want your others to live their life fully and not just go around in, in a pool of tears, you know, you, you want them to live. And I think that's really what we wanted the song to be is a, a song about letting go and a release. And man, it's, it's touched so many people's lives in that way. I think ultimately it has more uh, life to it than we thought it would have. I mean, we thought it was good. I mean, our lead, our funny thing is, is our manager said, too bad it doesn't have a chorus. I'm like, yeah, well, that's what we got, you know? <laughs> and lo and, lo and behold, it's the biggest song we have. So, I mean, you know, you never know, you know, what, what the answer is. You just make music. And that's when, when you know that a song is great is when it means something different as the years go by. When I first heard it, when I was in high school, it meant something different to me because I'd never had somebody uh, close to me pass away. It's more about listening to it depressed from, you know, a girl breaking up with me. And uh, but then, you know, when my dad passed away, uh, you know, almost five years ago. It had a whole new meaning to me. And I remember... It was a few weeks after his funeral and, and I, you know, and I, and I had to let it go to, to some extent. We knew that he was going to pass and I got to say my goodbyes and everything, but I was listening to a playlist. I always listen to music as I was, as I go to sleep and, and I don't know, I was like half asleep kind of in that state and it came on and I just, I kind of just burst out just crying and it all came out yeah. and, and it was yeah. a great, it was very uh, cathartic for me to listen to that song and uh it was like man this song has a whole different meaning to me now but you know that's that's the thing i mean look we're writers we're we're you know we're trying to figure out where this all comes from and i think that you know it just comes from god it comes from the universe comes from energy we're all tapped into that same thing 
And nobody's any more special than the other person. Like I said in the beginning of this thing, we're all wired the same. It's no big deal. But sometimes they, that strike of lightning just comes through. And that's not me. I, you know, it's just it, it, it's when I, it just goes through you. And I think that that's the, the key point as an artist is you let art go through you. You don't try to have ownership or ego to it. We just want to be a part of that soundtrack. I think that's really what we're in love with more than anything, because that's what drove us to be musicians. That's what drove us to go, wow, man, listen to that song. Oh, gosh, it just means it just it it rubs you the right way. And that's what music should do. It should it should touch your soul, man. It should should pull things, should rip it out and put it back together and put you know heal you and make you feel good and and to 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 move on in life. That's that's what the beauty of music is. The arrangement of this song is so well thought out and it's just feel. You know it's the way the song went. You know, you go, where is it going to go? You know, you have the... When it just stops and lets you breathe, I mean, you give the song wings. Sometimes not playing through it is, you know, what you're saying, it lifts. Well, sometimes you're just letting that, that chord go. You're letting it, you know, live a little bit. That's I think that's where it is, is you give you give the the space for that song. And I think that's the other part of it. Give it the wind under the wings, so to speak, to where it would lift. And that is the beauty of music is when you can cinematically get that almost a movie in your head of what the song is saying or where you're going with it. Not just as the lyric, but what gives the lift to the lyrics. Dana said, and I drive down this lonely road. That was Dana's thing because that's kind of the lonely thing. And I, and I've got to let you go. And that was my, you know, that was us, the yin and the yang of, of how we wrote things. It was more about, it, it's how you get the message across of where you're trying to go with it. I love your vocal. I lonely, lonely road. I mean, that's. Yeah, it's, it's very Zeppelin. Yeah, it's very Zeppelin. I think it's cool to nod to those that influence you, but I don't think it's cool to just completely blatantly rip it off. And I love the nod. And there's also a slide part that's going almost like a, uh, and I drive. And it's got like a slight, and it's almost free bird uh, Zeppelin is kind of what we are feeling with that. And then your vocal that the pain I love it when you when you hit that. Well the the pain, you know, if you're saying pain, where do you where do you put it? Where where would pain be? The pain or the pain is still not gone. That's what you're trying to convey. What I love about that part is that um, the ears are ready for it, and it's it feels so spontaneous how you yeah. go through that, and and it, and it is, it, it's just pulling it out, and that vocal always makes the hair stand up on the you know, on my neck. Uh, you know, how thanks. many times I've heard it. <laughs> and yeah, I I'm appreciate going that. into the chorus. It, I just I love. Kukakum. Yeah. yeah. Kukakum. Ah, there's but there's see there's a space there. But now you There's the wings out, you know, wings out. You're going to freaking just, you're going to go for it. And that's the key is it? you got to have that lift. And that's when you're writing music has got to take you into that vision 
of what the song is and not just the sound or the song. It has to take you there. Bridge in this song is one of the best, I think, of, of its time. We had the music up to that point, and then Dana's like, we should do something real Zeppelin-y and, and just slanky and cool and build it and just kind of let it flow for a second. I said, like, what? And then he, you know, he had that ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-do-do-da. And I said, great, we'll build it with strings. Like, immediately I'm thinking orchestra, which at that time they really didn't have a good orchestra that we could afford, um, you know, especially the way we made our record so we're doing it on a keyboard D you know to add that you know the uh how should i put it? the grandiose feeling of where it goes ba -da, and not make the guitar so distorted you wanted it to be clean the guitars are really clean on that it's not overly distorted Well, I can't let you go in that last pre-chorus. How you say that? Gotta let you go. You're kind of you're kind of talking to yourself into it. In Absolutely. The and then at the very end, you're just like, I can't let you go. Oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. The end vocal, I miss you, girl, and that last guitar kind of fading out. It's it really is just a masterpiece. Oh, thank you. was a, a song that stood on its own and it was different than anything you were hearing on the radio at this time it was and and it's and you know it's weird because if there was guitar on it it wouldn't be on pop radio and 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 it's still to this day if there's guitar on it it's not going to be pop radio i mean it's like guitar has disappeared from the recording aspect of so many things and now it's like you know, that's again that's part of it well we'll turn the guitars down and put the keyboard up that was like the the pop radio mix you know that's what they would do but we we really tried to honestly we tried to make our record to where the guitar wasn't too distorted and it was cleaner so that it would work on radio you know there's there's a lot of really dirty guitar in there but there's always a clean guitar right along with it that's that's in the background it's almost a direct guitar that's playing all the time so you can hear every note and and the separation of you know so it, it that was that was a very mindful way of recording that and the music video too another iconic music video i mean that was one that stood out because of filming it in the hangar and the beginning, how you're, the fans are singing up all night. Well, we wanted to segue it. We we were like this. It was like, you know, there's a lot of bands that are getting lost in a ballad. Um, we were seeing a lot of bands that were getting noticed as a ballad, but they were becoming a product of the ballad only. So when we did the video, we were like, let's let them know and remind them that, that this isn't all we do. We wanted people to know that this is part or this is an emotion of the band, but is not the whole, you know, the whole cake, so to speak. You know, it's just a frosting on it. This is just another part of what we do. And that, you know, it, it was really hard because the record labels are just pushing singles and ballads at that time because that's where the money was and they didn't want they didn't care about the rock bands but we wanted to play live and we wanted a career in which we you know inevitably made out of reminding people that we do that instead of just the, the having a you know bread or you know like a, the band bread or which is fantastic or you know, air supply which is just nothing but ballads. i mean there's people who've done that and there's nothing wrong with that but Right. You know, we we certainly didn't want to be air supply. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, Mark, man, thank you so much. But most of all, thank you for the music. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate your knowledge of, of knowing the charts better than I do. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I swear, man, we don't we don't we don't 
pay attention to that. I think we have it on our wall here or there, but you know, that's uh that's amazing, man. Yeah, you definitely you definitely know your stuff. You're doing so much for music because you know it's we need we need an outlet for it to get it out there. More success to you and your channel. I mean, it's great that you get that many subscribers and and um you know, it's for a reason. I mean, we're, we all love this. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to leave us a comment about Slaughter and this classic 90s hit. Ah, it just, it just gets me every single time. What are your memories of the song? What are your memories of that era? Let's have a great discussion below. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe. Love to have you as part of our community. Till next time, three chords. Have a truth.